Hello and welcome into this webinar. It is on how to tune an entire piano. Uh, and this is a request from Cheryl. And it will be um, basically, I'm, I'm going to see if I can load this up and see exactly um, what she was asking. But basically, in the, the mentorship, I know it's sort of something I had thought of too early on in my, um, in my uh, journey is like, I wanted everybody, I wanted I wanted um, to see how a whole piano was tuned, and I could never, uh, could never get that. I could never uh, figure out how to do it because people would just, you know, um, tune their pianos, and then uh, the, they would teach you like the the little bit of tuning here and a little bit of tuning there, tune this, tune this. But then you go to a whole piano, and you have to tune the whole thing. And and so, especially when I was trying to learn the, learn the temperament by ear, I was, I was always kind of confused on, well, how, how do we do this? And like, nobody ever showed me actually, there were a couple videos I found on YouTube of some um, older guys tuning some tune, uh, tuning that whole thing. But, but today in this webinar, I'm going to get right to it. I'm going to look up what Cheryl was asking. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see here. I don't even know if I can find it at this point. So We'll just we'll just see if I can find it. But, but she, she she basically asked, can I can I see the whole piano tuned? You know, like from the beginning to the end, and was asking something about Tune Lab, basically saying, um, yeah, if if you um you use the C1, C2, C3, C4 thing with Tune Lab, is that part of um, the question? There was some nuance to the question, so I'm trying to find it. Um, let's see, this is interesting. Let's see here. Oh, okay. I'd like to request a whiteboard lesson of a tuning from beginning to end. The goal is to create a mental map of the process. I just watched the measure of the piano video, um, and I'd like to determine whether or not to do a pitch raise or part of the setup temperament, C1, C2, C3 on the tune lab. I'm uncertain of the sequence of acquiring information initially before beginning the actual tuning. So um, I rewatched the video where you talked about the completely recheck your tuning. So that's a good thing. So yeah, you want to recheck the tuning. I'm going to go ahead and get into this. This is going to be uh, just a little bit of basically uh, my brain on the piano, uh, on the piano tuning. And this is the first time I'm using this new version. So uh, on Zoom, it's a whiteboard. And I'm so I'm just going to, uh, I like to draw. I love drawing. I love drawing. But the thing is, is the piano is, is, is divided into sections. So we'll call this like the low bass section. We'll call this the, the, the break section. We'll call this the middle, and this is the high treble. So this this would be the middle of the piano, where where you would find C4, basically. Okay. So this is important because what I'm about to do is I'm about to show you um, the stability of the piano and how to know where to go. So when you first sit down at a piano, let's assume this is a, an, an upright or a grand, whatever. We're looking at the pen block, and uh, we're looking at the keyboard and the pen block here, and this is the lowest part of the piano. And this is the highest part of the piano, okay? What happens in a piano, when you sit down at the piano, uh, a new client, and you don't know, you've never tuned the piano, it could be out of, out of pitch. You know, it could be down by 20 cents or 15 cents. What you're going to probably find is that it's going to be out of pitch in different areas. So you're going to find this part of the piano, um, and I did talk about this in my class uh, some. You're going to find this, we're just going to call this C, C4. This is the middle octave of the piano right here. Okay, we'll just call that the middle. You're going to find that the middle of the piano, it might be sharp, you know, and the uh, bass part of the piano is going to be good. It's going to be good. So it might look like this. You know, like it's it's decently in tune, and then it goes a little bit sharp. Then it might go a little bit sharper here. Then it might go flat here, and then it might go flat here. So this would this is what would happen to the piano if it was neglected. Now, if the piano is not neglected, the piano is going to be in tune. It's gonna it's going to be mostly in tune. It's going to be like pretty much in tune, pretty much in tune. Maybe it gets a little squirrely here. And then in the middle, it might go a little bit sharp because it's the summertime. And then it's going to be mostly in tune, mostly in tune. And then it might go a little bit flat on the end. That's just because these these strings get tuned poorly by other tuners or they just uh, don't hold up as much, okay? So what's going to happen here is is you're going to see that a normal piano, you're going to measure. And so what I do is I... Um, 
if you see a piano like this where you go in and it's the unisons are totally cracked in other words you know they just sound terrible like the piano sounds like it was dropped off a truck uh, off the back of a truck or it hasn't been tuned in 20 years you're gonna find the piano if this is your uh, let's see if this is your center line and I probably should draw a center line here yeah so th let's say this is your center line you're gonna find the piano is um, you know maybe it's like kind of really flat uh, let's, let's see really flat here let's draw this maybe the piano is really really flat here and uh, then it goes so really really flat and then it goes up and like maybe it's in tune here and then maybe it's really sharp here for a minute then it goes really flat here then it goes up and then it's like really one note is sharp one note is flat one note is sharp one note is flat it's all over the place and then here it's really flat on the high end like this I mean this is what a piano would look like if you didn't tune it for like uh, 20 years if you get a piano like this then you're you're definitely gonna have to do a pitch stabilization or a pitch raise or something like that but let's say that this piano that you found is negative 40 in the bass okay or negative 60 in the bass and then here it's plus 20 you know in in the middle and then now now it's negative 60 over here so you you get a sense of this piano being really jank so you're gonna have to pull up the bass you're gonna have to push down the treble in this scenario right here you that yeah, you'd have to be yanking the bass up you would have to be pushing the middle down pulling this up you know uh, evening this out and then pulling this up so you're gonna do a lot of different to the stuff to the tension okay so this is what we would call tension in a piano and this is this is what I talk about in the course a lot because once you understand tension then you can actually put the piano uh, in almost perfect tune and you can do it quicker and better than than anybody else because if you don't let, let, let's just for example if you have a piano that is like that let's say it's it's real flat right here and then it's kind of okay here but then it's really kind of sharp here and we're talking you know then it's like flat here and then it's flat here like this let's say we have a piano that's like that and I'm talking even if it's plus 20 here and it's negative um, let's say negative let's say it's really bad in the base let's say it's negative 25 and then let's say this is negative 40 you know even even if it's something like this this is bad enough if you start at the bottom of the piano and tune the piano so you go through this section go through this section just start tuning the piano uh, when you get to the end of the piano the piano will be out of tune it, it doesn't matter how good you are you will get this will not hold tune because if this section here is plus 20 so you're tuning this section right here you know this this octave let's say this octave is plus 20 and this octave down here you tune this octave next so this middle octave right here when you pull it up right here you're gonna pull it up so you're, you're bringing this octave up okay because it's because it's flat so you're pulling this up it is going to pull this octave out of tune okay it's probably gonna make this octave float flat okay because of the pressure and tension on the soundboard so if you have your octave here 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 let's say this and you tune uh, this octave right here is really out of tune and you tune this octave it is going to pull this octave and some of this octave out of tune the notes in the in these octaves okay it's gonna pull it out of tune so the piano has to be fairly in tune and we're talking about a, a basically a five to 10, 10 to 15 cents on either side okay let's say this is 10 cents and 15 is the is the highest you could get okay so we have 10 10 cents let's say this is 10 cents this is a 10 cents deviation okay now just stick with me because this is the most important part about tuning the piano you can't even start to tune the piano successfully if you don't if you don't get this part right if this piano is going like this maybe it's 10 cents flat here and then it's going like here and it's a little sharp here and then this one's a little bit flat and it's a little sharp like we're talking within 10 cents and it's doing this this is fine you can tune a piano like this and it'll end up in tune if this piano is out of bounds by 20 30 cents and then it goes sharp or then it goes flat or let's say the whole piano's flat by 25 cents maybe it's a little sharp a little flat but it's way under here this is let's say this is negative 40 and so it's way under here there's no possible way to get it to, to hold in the center unless you do a pitch raise so that's 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 what you have to decide at very first the reason why I'm talking about this 
is because you have to decide from the very, very beginning, are you going to do a pitch raise or not? I mean, it's kind of like the first, the first scenario is, are you going to pitch raise this piano or not? That is going to decide um, what you do. And so that is why in the very beginning of the, of the, um, of the whole thing, you're going to start out, uh, and I guess, look at this, I can actually make this um, middle C. Middle C. I'm just making this as pretty as I can because you'll probably get a copy of this at the end. Okay. Now that we now now we're going to decide if we're going to pitch raise the piano. Now we under now we, hopefully it's like your um, this theory I teach in the course, but it's this is a little bit different. It's it's really relative to this whole process, the whiteboard process from beginning to end. It has to do with tension. The tension has to be right. The tension has to be on your side. So if you're gonna let's say that how do you know if the, if it's out of tune? So that's what you do when you first sit down at the piano. You're going to start by measuring. And that's why I measure. I measure, um, and I usually do the, the, the A's. So I will, I will measure A4, okay? And I will measure A5. And I will measure um, A3, you know? And I will measure A2. And if there's anything weird, I might measure G. Um, I might also measure G sharp you know, up here, whatever, just measure some notes in this section, this section, uh, then you get to the A6 section, and then you get over to the A7 section, whatever, uh, down to the A1, okay, you're going to measure these, and how I think I might have written it in the course is that you can write them down, so you really should write this down, so you could, in the beginning, in, in, I'm more advanced, so I don't write it down anymore, so you might write it down on your AccuTune or your Tune Lab that A1 is negative 4, and then A2, you know, is, um, this is all you would have to do. And I'm going to write this down so, so we have it. A, A3 is, um, is about dead on. A4 is, uh, plus, is plus 4. You know, A5 is dead on. You know, it's right about, right about where it should be. This would be a, a great scenario. A6 is negative 2. And A7 is negative one. Okay, your this would be your first. You know, if you measured each one of them, you would see, oh, it's a little flat in the base. It's a little bit sharp in the middle. I mean, we're talking a couple cents, and then you don't have to pitch raise <clears throat> this piano at all. You can just start tuning this piano to zero, right to the zero line, and be perfect. Okay, so let's keep this one down there because that's a perfect scenario. Let's do another scenario, and then you'll be able to see if you were to. Um, if you were going to pitch raise this piano, so um, a you know a a zero is you know negative. Let's say a zero is negative um, fifteen. Okay, this is another scenario that happens a lot. A a a um, a a one or whatever. I, I'm I call it a zero. Let's just call it. I'm sorry. Let's just <clears throat> to be to be um, stable. Let's just call it a one. So it's like the first a. It really is technically a zero, but. Let's just call it the first A, not the, not the very very lowest A, but the very first A is A A one. Uh, we'll just call that A one. It's technically A one. So let's say that's minus fifteen, and then A two is uh, also uh, minus fifteen. Okay, and A three is minus eighteen, um, and then A four is minus twenty. Then A uh, that was A. <laughs> I'm getting my numbers mixed up here. Sorry. A, 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 a4, so just a3, and then a4 is negative 20, and then a5 is negative 20, and then a6 is, um, maybe it's negative 22, okay. It's going, it's going sharp a little, flat a little bit as it goes, and then this is negative 23, 24, okay. So you have this sort of, this might be a normal, this is a normal scenario on a piano that hasn't been tuned in a while. The bass notes, um, Actually, I'm going to make this a little bit trickier. So this is going to be a negative um, 12, okay? And then this one's going to be a negative um, 15, negative 18, and then this one's going to be 12. Okay, so this is this is better. This is more of a realistic scenario. The middle of the piano is more um, what you want to call unstable. It will it will be attacked by humidity, so it will rise and fall here a lot more. If you can see that section A1 and A2, which is right here, you see how they're like that negative, they're both negative 15, see? 
That's because this section of the piano hardly ever moves. This section hardly ever moves. Even when the humidity is crazy, you can always find out where the piano probably was tuned last by measuring a few in the A1 area, okay? You can't really deduce that from these areas because they're squirrely or, or this area because this area is affected by humidity a bunch. But if you know that this piano, if, if most of the notes in this area of the piano, the low octave, the low two or three octaves, are the, really the low two octaves, the first or second octave, are at negative 15, this piano could be floated down to negative 15. So you could decide to float the piano to negative 15. Um, because these, you know, these you can raise up a little bit. You're still within 8 cents, 10 cents, you know, even at 22, 24, that's still within 8 or 10 cents. So you can easily tune this at negative 15. So you would, you would set an offset on your AccuTuner to be negative 15. And then that means these notes of the piano would almost not be moving at all because they're already there, you know, and then the middle of the piano was down a little bit. So, you know, it was negative 18, but that's nothing. So you're going to tune that back up to 18. This is what this would look like. Negative 15 is now the center line. Negative 18 is just a little bit down and then, um, or negative 12 and then neg negative 18 is just a little bit down and then maybe negative 22 is a little down. That's what this piano would look like. If you reset the AccuTuner or the Tune Lab to a negative 15 offset, now your zero line, which used to be A440, um, is now now it's now it's negative 15. So this is this is how I would decide to tune this piano. If I came to this piano right here, this piano right here, I would put negative 15 in my AccuTuner, okay? Because I know my center line is there, and I know I can. I have to see each section. The reason I'm measuring each section is because I'm understanding the full tension of the piano. Now, the piano, this piano that I came to, I would tune this piano at, at 440 if I wanted to, because it's it's only going to have to come up a little bit in the bass by a couple cents. The middle of the piano is going to come down a little bit, but I mean, up a little bit. You're you're talking about you can safely move about eight cents. Now, what if all of the piano is eight cents. Okay, let's do let's do that scenario. Let's say <clears throat> let's say that all of the piano, and I'm because I want this to be thorough. I'm going to go ahead and make this happen. A one is negative ten. Okay, A two is negative eight. A three is negative seven. A four is negative six. A five is negative eight. A six is negative eight. A7 is negative 9. Okay. This is a piano right here that the middle of the piano, so let's say um, this is this is the piano we're working on right now. Okay. Let's say this one right here. You're at negative 10. So if you if you set your AccuTuner at negative 8, this would be your new your new offset. Then you would basically be bringing up the bass just a little bit. You'd be dead on in tune here. This one you'd be bringing down a little bit, A3. A4 is negative six, so you'd be bringing it down. It would be up here, you'd be bringing it down. You see, you, you'd be just b moving this piano slightly around that center line of negative eight, and then up down here, it, this, is, this, is, this would be perfection. If I found a piano that said this to me, negative 10, negative eight, negative seven, negative six, negative eight, negative eight, I would put this at negative eight. I focus on the middle of the piano, okay? The middle, when I'm getting ready to make my decision, I'm really thinking about the middle of the piano. The middle of the piano is the, is the, is the most unstable and it's the most played part of the piano. So um, even, if, even if this part of the piano was negative 20, you know, this part right here, but then this part was all negative eight, I'd probably still pick negative eight because this part of the piano, it's easy to pull it up. It's really short to pull this up. And then this part of the piano is already at negative eight, so it'd be very stable. So now I'm getting into the nuances of how I'm deciding intention and where to set the offset. If this low part of the piano is down by 20 cents, but the rest of this is at negative 10, I'm gonna set it at negative 10. And the reason is because when you over pull a piano, like when you're going through this tuning, and uh, you pulling this up, you're only really affecting the, the notes behind it that you've already tuned. You know, you're pulling the tension up. That's why if you, um, if you, so that's why if this is at negative 20, yeah, go ahead and yank it up. And then if you get to the middle and it's at negative eight, just tune this at negative eight and you're fine. So you can move, you can manipulate the tension. What happens is, is if you 
tune this section of the piano really nicely, okay, and it's perfectly in tune. And then you go to this section of the piano and you yank it up, you know. The tension on this section of the piano is going to yank out this section of the piano that you just tuned, okay. That's what that's what's happening. If you uh, so you can tune from so so you can tune this part you can yank up no problem because it's not got a section behind it you're going to affect and then when you get to this section you're going to stay stable so in a pitch raise so th this would be if you're floating it let's say the, the client says i'm about to have me a, a clarinet solo and uh we're going to record this over here at the house and you know we're really dead serious this piano was just uh in storage but it's 20 cents flat and i've got to pitch raise it you know the piano's way down here you're going to go through the piano with a pitch raise sequence and that's taught in the course so you're going to decide i'm going to pitch raise this piano and i'm going to do i'm not going to do pitch raise theory in this video i'm not going to do the whole pitch raise theory because uh there is a the todd anderson pitch raise that i use there is the five minute pitch raise there's all of this um, stuff with the pitch raise that you can do okay but i'm not going to go through it in this video because that would be um it's just it's just different it's a different theory okay um, so, but if you do have to pitch raise the piano, then you have to, in this section of your thought process, you have to decide that and you have to say, I'm going to pitch raise the piano. I'm going to pitch raise it. And then you're going to, that's part of the process is you're going to pitch raise the piano. So, um, maybe if I put the processes up here, so one, one, you're going to get to the piano and you're going to look at it first. You're going to inspect it, you know, get a feel for it. You know, you don't want to be there looking at this, you know, then you're going to, uh, you know, tell the client, you know, okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it, you know, ask them who's playing the piano um, in my first step, who's playing the piano, oh, it's your daughter, okay, how old is she, oh, she's okay, and I see her books on the piano, she's like in level one, okay, so I just get a feel for it, or if she says, oh, my husband plays, you know, he's in the symphony orchestra, he's the director, okay, so we have different, you're asking questions, kind of figuring out what's, what's going on in this piano, what is it, is it being played by a yeah, so they'll say, oh, well, we're just learning. We don't know much. Okay. Or, oh, my, my uh, husband is a recording artist. He's, you know, it's just going to be different stuff that you're going to hear. So you're going you're gonna to inspect and learn. And I'm talking about inspect the client and the piano because that's, that's all going to matter. Uh, it's all going to matter. Then when you say, okay, let me take a look at the piano. I'll, I'll get a feel for it. Some people like to hover around you and try to talk to you. And you can just say, give me a few minutes. I'll, I'll take it apart. Take the piano apart. Um, take it apart. Uh, whatever you're going to do to take it apart to get ready to tune it. I take off the bottom board. I take off the top. I get my tools out, you know, so take it, take it apart and get to get tools. Okay. That's, that's the second thing you're going to do. And then you're going to measure the piano. You're going to get to know the piano and this, you know, this happens in a few minutes. You can just hit a few notes or you can sit there and play it and listen to it. Now you're going to measure the tension. Now, now you're going to make decision. Your fourth thing is you're going to make a decision. This, this has to be done because it's going to decide what, what you're going to actually do. So you might have to call the client and, hey, uh, and you, this is where you'd upsell to. Hey, the piano's 50 cents flat, you know, and uh, I know your daughter's going to want to play this. And um, if you think you want to raise this pitch, if you think you can raise the pitch, if it doesn't have rust all over, hey, we're going to raise the pitch, but it's going to be an extra X, Y, Z. It's going to be an extra this much money. Um, or... I don't think we should raise this pitch, it's, but it's negative 50. This, this is the hardest part of this process in the home, is trying to explain to people about the pitch raise. If you even want to do the pitch raise, in my current scenario, what I'm doing in, in Nashville, most pianos are already at pitch, but if they're not, I, I will tell them, you know, this first tuning, I'm going to tune it where it is. I'm going to see if the pins are tight. I'm going to, you know, I just make it like I have to do this first. Um, there's no, you know, I'm not sure there's a little rust on the strings, you know, let's tune this piano, make sure it can hold where it is. And then we'll talk about raising the pitch on my next tuning or in six months or whatever. If they're like, no, we got to have this at pitch. We're having a concert. Then I'm upselling them the cost and I'm warning them that we could break strings. This is 40 cents flat. You know, if it breaks strings, it'll be extra, extra. Okay. We good with all this. This is more in the business section. So you're going to make a decision about your, where you're going to tune the piano. And I know this is this is controversial, and this is this is um, this is real life, though. And you might have people say, like, we're going to tune the piano at 440 every single time. Well, the number one that doesn't serve the client well, it doesn't serve the piano well, it doesn't serve your back, your neck well, it doesn't serve anything well. You have to make the decision 
And that's what's going to make you a master. You're going to make a decision to either do this or not do it. Either either raise this or not raise it. Okay. And we'll talk about more about that. So let's say we've decided that we're going to float the piano to negative 15. Okay. So then I'm going to do this because that's going to be, you know, if we were, if we're going to tune the piano at normal, it's, it's already at tune at pitch, it'd be easy. So I'm going to put this step in here because we're going to offset, um, to, uh, negative 15. Okay. So let's say that's what we've decided with the client and that's what we've decided with everybody or whatever. And so you're going to set your offset in your tuner to negative 15. You do that in different ways in Tune Lab and different ways with the AccuTuner, which you should know that, and you can see that in, in the course. So you're gonna set the offset to negative 15, and you're gonna make sure it's the perfect offset for what you wanna do, and, and, then, uh, and then you're gonna go down to A0, okay? A0, the very, very lowest A, and you're going to start tuning, okay? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop here because the question that Cheryl originally asked was about the tune lab setting the C1, C2, C3, C4 whatever, okay. Th this this is okay, so yeah, this is this is um this is I think where maybe the confusion was. So let's back up. Let's back this up. So make a decision you're going to tune it at -15, okay? Somewhere in here, you're, you're going to have to set your FAC for the AccuTuner. The AccuTuner is going to be an FAC set, or your Tune Lab is going to be set to, you know, you're going to set your set it up. Okay, and when you set it up, I mean, you can do the pre-listen thing where you listen to C1, listen to C2, listen to C3, listen to C4, and Tune Lab is going to set the temperament. So that that's I guess set temper. And it's really not the temperament. It's the temperament program, whatever, whatever. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time explaining what this is because it's not a temper. You're not setting the temperament. You're, um, you're really, you're really um, finding in, in harmonicity, setting, uh, let's see, setting the, let's just call it set at the program. Because what it's going to do is it's going to listen for in harmonicity in the piano and it's going to set up the AccuTuner's um, temperament or the Tune Labs temperament. It's going to set up the stretch, and that's what it is. It's going to set the stretch. That's what it is. Set the program, P R O G R A M, and this is the stretch. This is this is the internal stretch. This is not you. This has nothing to do with you. You don't have to worry about this. But this is the stretch internal. This is setting up the internal stretch of the program. So you can. Um, you can do this before you start measuring the piano, or really, I just just start measuring the piano. You know, I, 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 I there's two different ways I would do this, and I don't want to I want to get you confused. So I'm gonna stop at this section right here. I'm gonna talk about it in great detail, because this part right here, there is some nuance. When you first get to the piano, and it's all over the map. I'm talking. It just sounds like terrible. It's you just tell this piano is all janked up, right? You don't have to set the temperament right away or set the stretch, the internal stretch with the program. You don't have to go through with the with the AccuTuner and measure the F3, the F5, you know, and set set it up. That's the AccuTuner's thing. You don't have to do that. You can just measure around and be like, this one's low, this one's high, this one's middle, this one's well, this piano's terrible. Okay. And then from there, you can you can uh, make your decision to up pitch raise it or whatever with the AccuTuner. And then you can, depending on the piano, you can use the default, okay? So th that's, sometimes I just use the default, okay? Um, setting, I just use 876. So my FAC number in my AccuTuner is just 876. I mean, if it's a little spin it, and I'm not super worried, I, I do just use the default 876 FAC, put it in there. Then when I have the FAC programmed in the AccuTuner, I go over here and I, um, figure out my exact offset, but we've kind of already done that. So that that's um, what I do is I like to have the FAC in the AccuTuner, and then I like to go and check my offset. So let's say that we've made a decision. We're going to set this to negative 15, and we're going to tell them, yeah, overall it's going to be negative 15. Okay, we've decided on negative 15. So let's let's do that. So if really, I would decide on negative 15 with my, you know, in my head or with the client, whatever, I, you know, sometimes I tell them, sometimes I don't. Okay. And that's another, another issue, but sometimes I'll tell them, Hey, we're going to do this. Or sometimes I'm just going to do it. 
and that's all psychological business practice, which we'll have to talk about in another video. Setting the program on the internal stretch. So here's the nuance of this. On the AccuTuner, I'm not going to speak to the Tune Lab because I think you can just simply do the Tune Lab uh, when the piano's all out of tune. So the piano's all out of tune, you can just go listen to the C's and it'll tell you like the inharmonicity of the piano, okay? Then you're going to have to do the offset in Tune Lab to pull it down to negative 15, okay? All of this seems confusing, but it's well worth it because if you don't do this, you're never going to be able to tune the piano really good. You're always going to be struggling with the tension. This this makes the piano tuning so much easier and more stable. So it's it's worth it's worth taking the time to to think about it. So setting the program, the internal stretch, the AccuTuner, or the Tune Lab is fine. So you decide on negative fifteen. Now let's say you have your internal stretch inside. Okay, uh, you set up your AccuTuner, you did the FAC, uh, or you set up your Tune Lab and you did the CCCC thing where you're setting up the the stretch. You've you've got it at negative fifteen. Okay, this is a this is a really important this is um, this is the fine adjustment, fine adjustment of the offset. This is probably the most important point right here to do. This is a very important thing because you've made all these decisions up to this point based on sort of the piano's being out of tune. It's roughly out of tune. You're listening to it now. You've got the FAC in there. You know that's right. And now you're going to go back and measure your A's again, just just quickly. Go to middle, go to now that you've got your offset offset in the tuner, you're gonna go back and you're gonna measure A. You're gonna hit A and you're gonna watch. Now, if the Act Tuner's lights are just going backwards, you know, like real far, it's like they should be pretty close. Like you should be um, fairly close. It should look really close, is what I'm saying. I can't get that to erase. Uh, so your Act Tuner should be like your what the goal is is to get the lights sort of settling down on the AccuTuner um, before you even start. So if you've got the if you've got the adjustment right, if you've got the negative 15 right and it matches up here, you can go to uh, this is where I would go back to my A's. A1 A, A0 or you know A1. I mean, I don't really go here cuz these don't bother me too much, but you can just check them. Check them with what you've got on your AccuTuner. A3, A4, just look and see. Now, when you see this, let's say this is the meter on Tune Lab and this is the zero line. Okay, let's let's say that you go check A4 and it's way down here. Okay, that's okay. And let's say this is um, you know, 4 cents off, okay? And let's say this is 8 cents off. And then this is 4. Let's I'm giving you a scale so you can kind of see what I'm thinking. So, you've already set this up to be very close. And you measure A4 and it's down here. Okay. You measure A5 and it's right here. Okay. You measure A2 and it's like right here. You measure, you want it to be as close to this as you can. Um, and in A4, let's say A4 is like right here. Um, so you can adjust your offset at this point. You can say, well, instead of negative 15, I'm going to make it negative 13. And, and literally, I mean, find where most of them seem to be hitting close to the middle, you know, and and close to the middle and with this nuance a little above the middle okay this is this is actually the such a key you want before you start check your offset make sure that your your notes are a little sharp compared to your offset so a4 let's just do this in a4 cuz it can't be <clears throat> it can't be perfect with every note cuz the piano is out of tune in different ways. I mean, it's it's a little out of tune here, it's a little more out of tune there, and whatever. But around the middle of the piano, or in the bulk of the middle section of the piano, right around here, you want to try to get the offset to make to where you're either almost dead on tune, okay, this is A4, you're almost dead on tune, or you're slightly above. I'm talking a cent or two. You know, this is four cents. Not up here, not up here. You know, slightly above. And it's important because what happens is when you start to tune then, you're going to get into your A4 section and you're going to already be slightly sharp. Just like a center too sharp. You can nudge it down just a tiny bit and you're in tune. You do not have to jerk it up to pit, jerk it up over, and then push it back down, jerk it up over, push it back down, jerk it up over. You do not have to do that if you set this offset in this genius way. This is 
key. Fine adjustment of the offset is extremely important. If you want, and these are these are like wizard hacks. This is this is the wizard hack show. I mean, you're you're gonna hack this system so that imagine if you set the tuner to negative 15 up here because you're kind of doing it based on you know overall feeling you get it all set up you put the fac in and i've noticed it does change a little bit once you get the fac in now the fac is creating a stretch it's creating some sort of a, a stretch in the piano that looks more like this probably so it might move a little bit it may be a little bit different like by a couple cents in different places so you're going to get once your fac is set you're going to go in and listen to the A4, the A3, the C4, the C5, the C3, whatever, you're gonna try to get the offset to be where you're just either in tune or just above. So in the AccuTuner, you're talking about the lights moving like this. You're just moving like, you know, they're just moving a little bit. If the AccuTuner lights are going like this, you know, they're going real fast, you're, you're off by like 20 cents. If they're just moving like this, oh, they're just slightly going up upwards. Or if your um, tune lab is like, oh, it's just bouncing right around here, just right above, that's perfection. Because when you go to your tuning, you get to A4, you're already almost in tune. Imagine if everything was, a. this is why it makes a big difference. Because now your whole tuning, you're just nudging notes into tune. You're just nudging them down into tune. Now imagine if if you set this to negative 15 and went back and did your checks and everything was like two cents flat, okay? Let's just imagine that it was all two cents flat. Now this is a very bad problem because not that it's like a bad problem for your life or the piano or something's gonna happen, but it's gonna take you at least 30% longer because every single note is gonna have to be jerked above and settled down to pitch, okay? So every single note, you're setting yourself up a little bit too low. So when you when you set your offset at negative 15, and this is what it's doing, oh, it's it's negative 15. Okay, so the, your offset is negative 15, and it's showing you that everything's a little flat. I gotta think about this. So yeah, you would take you would take um, so now you're tuning the piano at negative 15. Now just tune the piano at um, negative 17 just add a couple cents to it okay now this is going to be up here now you know this is going to be up here so you're going to move your offset around and sometimes i just you know honestly i just because it's a little brain um puzzle just move it around just go to negative 14 okay now it's getting a little lower okay let's go to negative 18 okay now it's getting a little higher you know negative 17 and i i so i change the offset to like negative 16 or let's say i change it to negative 16 then i play a a2 a3 a4 and i look at them just real quick i actually use my two fingers to touch the strings or my fingernails and i just mute the mute the two strings i play the note ding and i look at oh it's that's and i see it's like oh this is getting better it's a little bit sharp now and so i i just take a little bit of time to adjust my offset okay this is important fine adjustment of the offset now we've done all of this before we've ever tuned a, tuned a note so now I'm worried how long this video might be um, but we've we've done all this now that's the fine adjustment of the offset number eight you're going to start tuning at a zero <clears throat> and this is actually the video is probably this webinar is probably getting close to over because now you're tuning so you tune from a zero you go up all the way to a you know all the way up to the, the very very last key so so all the way up to the end to the end tune to the end okay just straight through and and you know how to do that from the video so you're just you're just literally tuning unisons now a zero you know walking mute tune all the way up all the way through and um you're not adding anything to the tuner. You're just going, you're leaving it at your offset. Number nine, you get to the end of the tuning. This tuning should feel easy because there should be slow movements. There should not be these huge changes and movements and everything. Everything should be pretty, pretty good. And after I get done with this, I will go into what happened if we had to do the pitch raise and I'll, and I'll do that right at the end of this video. So we go A0 to A to the end and then I go back and I just play the piano. I play the piano, okay? Um, and then, number 10, I touch up unisons. 
Um, and sometimes on a grand, I touch up the unisons before I play it, just depending on the day. So either play it piano first and then touch it up or touch it up and then play it. But um, touch up the unisons and then play the piano again. Play the piano more. Number 12. You're gonna check, you're gonna check the pedals, okay? Now you guys know how to check your touch up your unisons because I've already showed you that and use that technique I um, use in my um, online in the online courses where you're gonna listen to every single unison quickly and then listen to the left string and the right string, listen to the left string, just go down. That's um you're gonna check the unisons. And how I do that, I'll go ahead and put it in this video. I, I play this I play the A three note, I touch the two, I mute out the left and right string, I play the A three with my finger on there. I teach this on online so you'll be able to see it. I lift up the and I listen to the center and the right, and then I and then I touch and listen to just the center. Then I listen to the center left, and then I touch this listen to the center. And I listen for the clear, pure unison. And if I hear that when I lift my finger and I listen to the left with the center, if I hear a change or a difference, even a little bit, then I go and I touch that left unison up. Okay. Check the pedals. Uh, put the piano back together. And uh, write your write your invoice. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna um, get client, and you're gonna ask them to play the piano. Um, hey, check it out. See what you think. M most clients are gonna say no. Uh, that's okay. It, especially if you're a good piano player, and they hear you play, they're not gonna play in front of you. So you can say if you want to play, you know sit down or if you did some extra work you did some voicing or something hey listen to this see if you like it do you want me to play it for you or you know most people will after i've i've played the piano most people will say no 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 i'm you know i'm okay but if they're good piano players then they'll be like yeah and they'll sit down and they'll start ripping it up and then it's kind of fun so you, you know it just depends on um how long i play if i play a long time and i'm you know getting into it and i've played some pretty good stuff they're usually like no i i'm i'm good i hear it they can hear it in their house and they go like yeah that sounds really nice so you want to, but you want to ask them to play it because you don't want to drive off the driveway and 10 minutes later, I got this noise that's on the C key and that does happen. All right, let's, let's say, um, let's say, what if you have to do a pitch raise and here is the pitch raise sequence. Oh my gosh, I can't type. All right, what if you're going to do a pitch raise? So you're going to make a decision and do the upsell and this would be like from level if you're gonna if you're gonna have to do a pitch raise, I guess we would take it from here. Um, you're gonna decide on a pitch raise. So like, let's make this boop. Let's like make this the number five. So if this is the new number five, so number five. So this would be the new number five. Um, decide on a pitch raise. So if you decide on a pitch raise. That's what would happen here, and I like I want to make this right. So, so if if you actually um, decide with the client or whatever that's yep, it's going to be a pitch raise, then you're going to move from this section down to here. Okay, decide on a pitch raise. So first of all, in the pitch raise, I'm guessing what I would do is on number six, I would find uh, because you've already measured, you know how low it is. So you're gonna you're gonna um, start doing your over pull. You're gonna you're gonna set your tuner to zero. Um, basically, you're gonna set your tuner to z make sure there's no offset. Set tuner to zero offset. Make sure it's at a four forty. You know, set up fine. You're gonna um, you've kind of already got your FAC set, so you can you know, check your FAC again. If you want to, okay, I'm going to a tuning, set it to zero, check my FAC, or do the um, uh, do the internal stretch, okay? Okay, so you got your internal st stretch sequence completed. And then there is no need to adjust the fine adjustment of the offset because you're not, you're not doing an offset. What you're going to do is you're going to start tuning from zero, A0. Zero, start at A0 and start tuning. You're going to start pulling, okay? Now, I use the five-minute pitch raise. And I do that because it's, it's way faster than any other pitch raise. So I'm going to say, 
um, I'm gonna say do the five minute pitch, do the five minute pitch raise, and it's probably gonna be um, like ten or fifteen minutes for you. But if you do a standard pitch raise like you would normally do, it's gonna take you um, it's gonna take you probably forty five minutes to do the first pitch raise. So you're gonna do the five to ten minute pitch raise. If you do not know what I'm talking about, check out the online course because I'm, I show you exactly how to do it. You do so. What you do on that is you're gonna block up the pedals. Block up the damper pedal, so every so all notes are ringing. Okay, and I can't see my notes anymore. Why is this going? I want to get rid of this. Why is this? Okay, so I don't know why this won't let me move this. Let's see. So block up the damper pedal, so all notes are ringing. Okay. Okay, and then you're going to go through, and you're going to start at A zero. kind of weird sorry about that it's kind of weird to um start at a zero and you're gonna pull up pull it up note by note okay now when you get to uh, I guess I'm not gonna get too far into this but when you get to the middle of the piano depending on how far off the piano is and this I'm not gonna go into the deep dive of a pitch raise right here because I do that in the course you, you're gonna start to raise the piano a little bit more as you go so it's like if you're if you're having to you're you're over pulling the piano okay so um yes here you are over pulling by a artistic amount now i said that because it isn't like Add five cents here, add five cents here, add five cents here. You have your pitch raise. You can use the pitch raise calculator on the AccuTuner or the Tune Lab, but those I don't use those. Okay, I use I use my brain because you've already you've already figured out um, what the piano what what the how how to tune the piano is. I guess my piano got deleted there for a minute. You've already figured out how to tune the piano is. So you're going to add uh, over pull depending on your artistic ability okay this is this is not um, a robotic thing you're going to know this is how far this is out of tune I'm this is where I'm reaching for and I talk about that in and I'm not gonna I'm just not gonna it's a it's a little bit confusing the theory behind of it but basically you're gonna start to over pull the piano as you go up so when you over pull the piano you get it done then 11 is you're going to go back to the beginning, you know, back to the beginning of the piano, okay? And start your fine tuning. Now, you're going to go back to A0 and you're going, now that you've got it pitch raised, you're going to go back to A0 and you're going to go through every single note, fine tune the piano all the way up, okay? Then you're going to basically um, start over at this. You're going to play the piano when you're done. 12, 13, you're going to uh, touch up the unisons. And then number 14, uh, which would be down here, you're going to play it again. Okay. And then number 15, you're going to get the client. You're going to write the invoice. You're going to put it back together. You're going to uh, get the client. And you're going to go home. No, I'm, a, I'm sorry. You're going to get paid. Then you're going to go home. At this point, I usually tell my client, uh, you know, it's been in pitch raised. It's probably going to be need to be tuned again sooner than later. So instead of maybe six months or a year, maybe do three months. And then after that, we'll know and it will be good. So this, I feel like I'm at the right place here in terms of the overall. And I, maybe this got into the weeds a little bit. I think when I'm done with this video, I'm going to make a really short video that sort of outlines the, you know, the step by step because this this got a little bit into the weeds about tension but if you if you don't get that right you're never going to be a good piano tuner and so I, I really feel like that's important with with the process of a whole tuning because people if you get confused on one on one step and you don't do it right or you just get where you're kind of confused um then, then it's mostly going to be about tension. It's mostly going to be about the reason why tension is important is if you don't get tension right, then it's likely that you won't ever get the piano to, to stay in tune. 
you'll tune the piano and you'll listen to it that day before you even get up from your tuning you could be there for an hour and a half tuning and when you get up you're going to think this piano does not sound right it doesn't sound in tune that's what's going to happen if you don't get tension right so that is um exactly what's what's going to happen I, I i feel like i'm an expert this is a pdf yeah okay good and it looks like uh let's see export move to trash export is a png i'm going to export it in both view and folder all right so it's it's basically been exported to my documents to my zoom and there we go okay i was just checking to make sure i've got this so if you have any questions beyond this just write those questions down send them to me in the email so i know exactly what to do i hope this has clarified the entire process and there is that moment that you have to make that decision on how to do it and that's why you're going to be a master piano technician that's why you're going to be uh, really stand above most people a lot of piano technicians will get to a piano and they they they, they approach the piano as if it's um everyone's the same and they're there to just make this happen to put the universe back in order the way it should be but the piano will beat you um every time if you do that if you think you're there to make this to, to to make this thing back to order make this thing right you have to listen to the piano you have to look at the piano you have to understand the tension where it is where it's been realize if it's already if it's already been 40 cents flat for 40 years what does that mean how are you going to pull it up and make it all perfect it's going to take time i always say that, uh, that 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 stable tunings happen with consistency over time consistent tuning over time will create stability so that is this is the beginning a lot of a lot of you when you're going into your client's house this is the first time you're touching this piano it's your first moment with the piano it could be 10 years that you're tuning this piano so just take it one step at a time figure out where the piano is um, figure out where you're going to put it, put it there, come back six months later, figure out if it's still there or what happened to it. Now, if you measure this piano and you keep notes, next time you come and you see, oh, the piano, maybe the piano was all out of tune and now you come back, this happened to me the last week. Um, last, I, the piano was way out of tune, it was all over here, all this. I went and I tuned it and, you know, then they called me back. It was like they moved houses. They, it was like the next year I came back, the piano was like this. It was just right there, like normal or where it should be. You know, so the first time I tuned it, it was like all over the place. And I told them it's gonna, it's gonna take a while. It was a free piano off Craigslist. And, uh, and then I got there and it was just, you know, it was, it was like a good tuning and it was real easy. Um, there's been other, other times where the piano's all over the place like this and I tune it and I pitch raise it and I try to fix it and I get it all, I come back a year later and then the piano's like this, it's up like this and it's all over. And you're like, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? You know, I put the piano here last year and now it's down here. You know, pianos don't do that on their own without something weird. If you put a piano at the zero line one year, and you come back, it better be close to that zero line or maybe have a little spike in the middle where the humidity got it to go or maybe go a little flat over here. It should not be up like this and down like this and over like this. This is unusual, okay, and, and strange. All right, that's it for this session today. I'm gonna end these, uh, I'm gonna end these live, uh, live streams and I'm gonna end this. If you have any questions, let me know. Go to apexpiano.com to get more information and I hope that this really has enlightened you and given you more